Yeah. <laughs> So here I am with Mr. Gavin McClively, somebody that you have seen around a lot. Gavin, how are you doing today? I'm very good. What is it you've got? Is this a new one? TFR. You're getting very professional, Charlie. T -T I like it. Yeah, I'm very I'm, impressed. I'm, I'm getting there. I just need I just need the sponsors to get totally <laughs> professional. Because right now, uh, anyway, you are director of rugby in Okapi, right? Correct. Yeah. Um, so what does that entitle? Because no, I don't see many teams having directors of rugby. Well, it's it's a way of freeing up some time, firstly, so that I can sort of focus on the bigger picture. Um, so what we've with us having, I think, 23 or 25 coaches in the club now, um, that's obviously a, a good opportunity for no, us. Nobody to, needs you. They don't need, no, for sure they don't need me, that's, that's definitely. No, but basically the idea is that we've been talking for years about sort of making the, the game book or the, the, the game plan. Um, I'm not much of a writer, so the objective is that... You're, you're more of a talker. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, so so I, I kind of spend a little bit of time each week after games, after training, um, in, my, excuse me, in my office, um, just creating little videos so that we can sort of analyze how the kids are playing, analyze how we're coaching as a team as well. Because um, at the end of the day, 25 coaches, that's a team of people. Yeah. You know, so making sure that everybody's on the same page with, with the game plan, um, making sure that we're using the same methods, the same mentalities throughout the whole club. Um, obviously, we adapt the, the game plan a little bit based on... Um, the age. Based on the age, of course. Um, so yeah, that, that's the objective of it. When is I, it, how's it, is that, do you see that actually showing on the field now? Absolutely, yeah. No, that that's definitely no, translating mean, on the I, field. I, I have I have been a couple of times here already watching your 16s and 19s and 14s, mm -hmm. and I would say that is something that like you sense that, that there's something you know that everybody's playing more or less in the same in the same way. Yeah, that that for me, there's a big part of it is when we're we're speaking with the coaches, little things like I don't know. I saw the the coaches were doing a good job of coaching the kids that were on the field, but we've got in the under 14s we've got about 30 kids. So there's you know 10 guys on the field, and there's another 20 that are not on the field, right? But you've got four coaches that are maybe to only coaching the 10 that are on the field. So, you know, little things like, hey, let's separate two coaches off so that they're talking to the kids that are on the bench because they're the ones that need to learn, right? Because they're maybe the less developed players. And, hey, what's happening with the team that's, that's actually on the field? What's your position there? What's that player doing? And when you're replacing them, are you doing the same thing? So it's little pieces like that. It gets It's maybe a little bit over-detailed, but it, it helps, I think. How how is this season looking overall compared to to last season? Um, I mean, number wise, the quality of of, of, of the teams. Uh, yeah, num number wise, it's I think it's increased a little bit. I, I don't I haven't checked the numbers, but I'm looking at uh, I think our under 19s, mostly in about 34 guys at the under 19 level, another 32 in the. I would say that that is the number you actually need for a successful season, right? Right. 30 something. Yeah, because you got you got to get three or four guys that can't turn up for work, right? Because at that age, 19. Teens, they're probably working as well as school so there's always three or four guys can't show up for that you end up with two or three injuries you know so then you've got 27 to yeah. choose from 26 maybe so yeah that's, do, do you get, at that level do you get a lot of kids from from the football team the local football team here so actually what we did this year with Cypress Bay the Cypress, local high the, the local high school team we actually at the beginning of last season spoke with the, the football team invited the coach over and he he basically watched the training session uh -huh. in that training session obviously we did a bit of tackle and then you know we've got lunatic rugby players with you know no mouth guard no helmet just <laughs> training and tackling and he loved it because he's like well these guys are smaller now players but they're tackling harder and tackling more correctly and um, so that worked really well and we ended up having six or seven of our guys actually went and played for the football team that wouldn't normally have played okay so in return that's that we're seeing a little bit of that maybe three or four guys so, from the football so team. through that uh, approach uh, the football coaches were happy to have their football players play rugby yes i was talking with chris uh, vassil mm -hmm. just now and and they sort of that's something that they sort of accomplished of you know sort of actually uh having the football coaches understand that rugby is not something that's going to take away their play that's just going to make them better yep most likely uh, absolutely they i think they definitely benefited from it as a as a football team firstly because then you have you know added five or six guys that really know how to tackle correctly um, and, I, and he definitely got a benefit from that. My own son played with the team. Um, and then from that, on the on the flip side, we've got a couple of guys coming in now that are like, this is kind of cool. What am I what am I getting into here? And by the time you've taught them how to tackle properly, they're like a lot more confident and they're, they're going into it in a different mentality. So yeah, just opened up, we opened up a few of the doors there with that and I think that's helped. Um, but reality, we were, we were at 26, 27 players training 
um, before the football season even finished. So okay, okay. you're gonna have a nice season th this year, as everybody's playing everybody in the U19s, mm -hmm. U16s. You have a few more teams this year because last year was sort of painful to mm -hmm. for the kids to not have competition. But I think we're gonna have five teams this year. That's so great. That's, that's good. That's good news. I mean, we're again so. we're at similar numbers for in the 16s. So. And it's such an important division, U16s, it is. right? I mean, we developed like we we had uh, the the current under 16 coaches were last year's under 19 coaches. So now we're kind of just rotating those guys. You didn't around. see my interviews I did here. You weren't there that day. Ah, uh, maybe yeah. I yeah, was probably yeah. sleeping or yeah, relaxing. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so and as I see your nice shirt here, which I don't have one of. Jaguares, any mm -hmm. any update on Jaguares? So Jaguares, not too many updates right now. But what I do plan on having done um, with with the whole group and and Chris Vassell's very Im important part of that as well is to start doing monthly training sessions, just once a month, maybe on the, a Sunday, maybe last Sunday of the month, for example. Get the kids together, invite them all together, and then do these sort of regular training sessions like we would do um, in the um, at the end of the season. Try and do it throughout the season, month by month, so that by the time we get to the end of the season, yeah. we don't have to start that selection process we probably got you know two-thirds of the team selected already okay that would be the idea well looking forward to a nice day of rugby here the little kids have already done we have the u14s playing u16 u19 these are like the best days of, of rugby keep you know, it's, it's always nice to have keep up here when it's it yeah but keep you had boca this is something that you know clubs should look at to have because you know, just imagine every every club, men's team, women's team, having all these divisions playing before their their, their game. That would be really awesome. Exactly. Yeah, it's like sort of a family day. It's a little bit quieter than normal today. Yeah. The last the last time it we is. had Kibis game up here three weeks, four weeks ago, and they had the, every age group was here. It was yeah. fantastic. We had a fantastic day out. Uh, this time with Boca coming in as well great to see them and uh, we, a couple of weeks ago we did the same thing with Wellington so yeah the more of these the more of these things the the, the better um, we've got also sort of in terms of community uh, rugby we've got uh, Rugby Americas North coming in um, in, oh, let's uh, in, talk about that in quickly, January because you have you have this tournament on the beach coming up in yeah uh, so is, Rugby it, Americas is North is for high school also there's yeah they want to have a high school oh, division as well so that'd be under under 18s basically um, so what we've got so far it's at Hollywood Beach uh, Margaritaville, uh, right in front of the hotel there. We'll have the inflatable five-a-side rugby field, which is phenomenal. It's cute. It's a lot of fun. Uh, we have a DJ, we have like vendors and all that kind of stuff. Rugby Americas North organizes that. They're basically the division for this region of the world for world rugby. Um, so they sort of fund it and make it all happen. Um, and I'm usually the guy on the ground just doing the dirty work, which I enjoy doing. Um, and then I get to spend the day at the beach running after you know the likes of you and the, and the rugby community, making sure that everything, <laughs> everything happens. <laughs> But yeah, it's a, it's a great yeah, day out. So the idea is right now there's 18 adult teams signed up, um, which interestingly enough, only four of them are from Florida. No. So there's about well, 14 teams coming into the state to Florida play that. going to be the last ones, of course. I mean, yeah, it's, it's but how many teams do you have like last year? How many? Last time I think we had 24 teams 24, okay. with the, before the pandemic. Well, um, you don't want to have that many teams because you just have one little pitch, right? Well, we have one field, but if we do get, a, a, you know, say we get 30 teams, we can get another secondary oh. field, and we do have permission from the city oh, okay. to, to make that second field, so it's a, we can take up more space if we need to. Okay, okay. Good time. Uh, that's uh, January 8th, um, and you can register that any time before the end of this year. Yeah, we'll put some information here. Awesome. Thank you, mate. Hey, Gavin, nice seeing you. Thank I'll, you very much I'll for everything you you're around. doing. We'll have you on the podcast coming the season. Absolutely. Okay. No problem at all. Yep. I'll, 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 I always look forward to seeing you. Thank you. Not really, I'm joking. Gavin McLeary, <laughs> Director of Rugby of, of, of Cap. Thank you. Bye. Cheers, mate.